What's up guys, this is Shubra from Kryzen. In this short video, I'm going to show you guys how to write a very basic algo on the Code Studio. Before we get into the internals of the algo, we need to start off by specifying a couple of things like the exchange that we want to trade on, the symbol or pair that we want to trade, and our starting capital, which in this example is 1000 USDT. For a backtest, we would simulate 1000 USDT, and for a live deployment, we would allocate 1000 USDT from a given account to this strategy. Below that, we specify the trading frequency of the strategy, which can be either daily or minutely. And for backtests, we specify the start time and end time of the backtest. In this example, we're trading on a daily frequency. A little bit further down, we see the initialize function. The initialize function runs once at the start of the strategy, and it takes as input this variable called context. The point of context is to share information between all of the functions in this strategy. You can set any property of context to equal whatever you want. In this example, we have context.asset equals symbol name, which is Ethereum USDT. A little bit further below that, we have the handle data function. Handle data gets triggered every time there's a new data update or candle available for trading. The inputs to handle data are again context and data. Context again is for sharing information between the various functions in the script and data will provide the information related to the latest candle plus previous candles that are available to make use of for your trading strategy. In this example, we're using data.history to get some data on the current candle as well as past candles. Data.history takes as input four things. The first is the asset that you're trading. The second thing is how many candles worth of data do you want? The third is the fields that you want, which for a candle would typically be open, high, low, close, and volume. And further, it takes the frequency of the candles that you want. So here we have 1D for daily candles. And if we specify 1T instead, we will get minutely candles. In this example here, we're querying for three days worth of candle data at daily resolution. Let's print this and see what it looks like. So to print anything or see anything that the script is doing, we need to backtest it. So I'm going to hit the backtest button over here and give it a second. Once the backtest is complete, we see some statistics here related to the backtest, which we will talk about another time. If I switch over to this logs tab over here, I can see all the print messages. So just like we queried, we got three days worth of data and we got the fields that we specified. We get our result in a pandas data frame. So as you can see, this pandas data frame has three rows of data. Our index is time, and we get our latest candle at the bottom of the data frame, and we get our oldest candle at the top of the data frame. The last row of the data frame always refers to today's or the latest candle available. With this data, we can do many things like quantify trends. Is the price going up? Is the price going down? We can you know, use this data as input to machine learning models and so forth. So using this data, we can come up with some trading signals. And when we have found a signal that tells us we should buy, we can place a buy order using the following handy function called order target percent. Order target percent will take your current portfolio and convert 75% of it in this case to the asset of interest. When you start this strategy, you have 0% of the given asset and 100% um, of your portfolio is in USDT. So when this function is run, the first thing it will check is how much of this asset do I currently have? Well, currently I don't have any Ethereum in my portfolio. Uh, therefore, if I want 75% of my portfolio to be in Ethereum, I need to buy Ethereum to make that happen. If on the other hand, 100% of my portfolio was in Ethereum and I want 75% of my portfolio to be in Ethereum, then I need to sell a bit of Ethereum and decrease my Ethereum amount to get to this 75% uh, number. So if I hit the back test button now, I will see some orders being placed. Let's give that a second. And there we go. So green triangles represent buys and red triangles represent sells. So you may be wondering why there are so many buys and sells. Well, the reason is every time candle data runs, it runs everything inside of it. And so if we continually run order target percent to say that 75% of my portfolio should be in Ethereum, well, that will continually adjust my portfolio to make 
75% of my portfolio be Ethereum, um, because once you've bought some Ethereum and the price of Ethereum changes, well then your portfolio is no longer 75% Ethereum and you may need to sell some Ethereum or buy some more to readjust your portfolio to be 75% in Ethereum. So that's it for placing orders. Let's say I want to just buy once and then stop instead of having this behavior where we're buying and then there's a bunch of different sales going on afterwards because every iteration of the loop, we're looking to uh, have exactly 75% in terms of Ethereum in our portfolio. So in order to just buy and then stop, I need to have some kind of variable that keeps track of have I bought or not. So let's create a global variable that defines this. I will say, I will call this uh, global variable bought and I will set it to false by default. And then down here in my handle data function, I will use this global variable bought and do a check before placing an order. So if I have not bought, right, then I will try to buy. And if I buy, that means I need to set this to true so that the next time around when handle data is called, you know, bought will be set to true and so not bought will be false and it will not buy again. So in this case, if I hit the backtest button, I should only expect to see this buy over here. So let me go ahead and press that. And as we expected, we only have one buy and no further actions are taken. Also, some of you may be wondering why this buy is happening on the second candle rather than the first candle, right? Because handle data is getting called, we're placing a buy and then doing nothing else. So maybe it should be occurring on this first candle over here. Well, the reason that it works like this is because you always get the candle at the end of the candle. So on January 1st, at the end of January 1st, which would be this time, uh, 2359, you get the candle for January 1st and you place an order. So you place an order and you know, right now you're at the closing of January 1st and that order gets filled the next day at the opening of January 2nd. So this is the opening price here and it gets filled at that price. Okay, what if we wanted to buy and then sell and have some kind of oscillation pattern of buy, sell, buy, sell? That should be pretty straightforward. So we would add another if statement and this time we check if we bought, then we want to sell. How exactly would we sell? Um, we would just say 0% of our portfolio should be in Ethereum. So if we have an Ethereum, it will sell all of that Ethereum. And then I need to set this bought variable to false so that it knows that we are no longer in a bought position, we have exited, and so we are open to buying again. So let me hit the back test button and check that out. Okay, there we go. So now it buys and sells. Um, interestingly enough, I have a bug in this code, which is because bot is being set to true, then over here, um, it's, it finds that bot is set, set to true and then it tries to sell immediately uh, thereafter. So what I actually need is an if condition and that should give me my desired behavior of buy, then sell, then buy, then sell. And there we have it. We get our desired behavior of buy, then sell, buy, then sell. Okay, so how do we do something interesting with this? Let's look at historical data and try to create a strategy based on the following hypothesis. If the price is going up, we believe that it will continue going up. If the price is going down, we believe that the price will continue going down. So just based on that simple hypothesis, let's figure out when to buy and sell. So I'm going to set bar count equal to seven. So we have seven days worth of data in historical data, which is one week. And then I'm going to look at what is the price change over this one week. So I want to take a look at historical data. This is a pandas data frame. So let's say you know, we'll go by the closing price and we will take the last closing price. So today's candle's closing price and subtract from it the first day's closing price in this period. So that would be seven days back. And we will call this the net change in price, right? Also, it would be useful to plot this net change. So, you know, we can do a sanity check that this is being computed correctly. To do that, we will call this plot function, which is included in these uh, strategy templates by default. First argument to this plot function is the context variable. After that, you can give it any piece of data and it will plot it. So in this example, 
um, I will plot the net change and I'll call the name of this data series net change. I could have called it anything else, but in this case, you know, why not? Let's call it the same thing. So if I hit the backtest button now, I will see an extra plot that will show me the net change. Okay, there we go. So we have an extra line now that shows us the net change in price over seven days. I can't really verify this right now because I don't have seven days worth of backtesting data. Uh, so I can't really look back seven days and manually confirm that this is correct, but we will do that in a second. So our assumption was that if the price has gone up, then we want to buy, right? So if the net change is positive, if net change is greater than zero, it's positive, then our assumption is that the market will continue moving in that direction and that it's a good idea to buy. So let's uh, take this condition and actually merge it with the other if statement below so that we don't need to have multiple if statements. We can just put the conditions together. And then let's test it out. So right now it will buy, but not necessarily sell um, based on a net change being negative. So we should also add that condition. So I'm going to add here a net change less than zero and boom. So just to quickly go over this logic, if the price change over the last seven days has been zero and I haven't bought anything, then I want to buy. If the net change over the last seven days is negative and I have bought something, then I want to get out of that position. Simple as that. I will go up and increase the range of this back test so we can take a look at a longer time period to verify that net change is correct and also to see you know, some uh, potentially interesting buys and sells. Okay, there we go. So let's take a look at what's happening. So it bought once here, right? And that's because you know, if you went back seven days, whatever the price was seven days ago was lower than this day's price, um, actually January 1st, right? And, and then on January 1st, we realize, okay, the net change is positive. So we place an order and it gets filled on the opening of January 2nd. Uh, and then the price seems to be going up for a long time. So this net change less than zero condition doesn't really get triggered until this point here. So let's zoom in. Uh, to this point and check out what's going on there. By the way, you guys can pan this graph by clicking uh, on that pan button. So this is the candle of interest, right? So at the end of the day on January 15th, we decided to sell. That sell order goes through on the next day uh, at the opening price, right? So if we go back seven days from January 15th, so January 9th, the closing price is 1,291. Here, the closing price is 1,271. So the closing price has gone down relative to January 9th. Uh, and that makes sense, right? If you count, but it's inclusive. So if you count the candles from January 9th to January 15th, there are seven candles there. Um, okay, so on this day, we realize that the net change is less than zero. And so we sell um, on the next day and we get out of our position. So the logic seems to be working. The net change is being calculated in the way that we think. Uh, the net change is also being plotted here. So if I go up here, it's saying the net change was negative uh, 247. So let's see if that's true. So if we go uh, actually over here, the net change is negative 20. This is the candle where the, the sell order was placed. So 1,271 is the closing price. 1,291 uh, is the closing price here. So yeah, the difference is 20, negative 20 uh, rather. And so we see that. Okay, so if I zoom out, you know, it buys again here, sells again there, and so on and so forth. So if I look at the overall value of my portfolio. I started with a thousand bucks and I ended up with 1,400 uh, bucks over this period. If I go to my output section here, we can actually look at some interesting statistics related to this strategy. So the market return has to do with how much this asset that you're trading has changed over the time period that you're back testing over. So Ethereum went down, right, in this time range that we're looking at. And it went down by 7.56%. Uh, Portfolio return has to do with what your strategy is doing. So every time your strategy buys and sells, you know, your portfolio value changes. Um, and when the asset price changes, it also changes. So you know, here we're looking at how well your algorithm performed. And so in this example, the algorithm made 40%, uh, it made a 40% return, whereas the market went down about 7.5%. So your excess return, how much you beat the market by, is 48%. I won't talk about the sharp ratio or the max drawdown in this video, but we will get into it in a future video. So that's interesting. This strategy is making money. Uh, what if we run it over a longer time period? Because to really know if this is a strategy that's worth running, 
on the actual markets, we have to have more data that we're running this over to be more confident. So let me try over the year of 2018. Okay, and there we have it. So this strategy buys and sells quite frequently over the last year, over 2018. And it starts off with a thousand bucks and ends off with 1,722 bucks, which is actually really impressive. I actually um, did not try the strategy before, so I'm surprised how well it's performing. Um, the idea is so simple, it's mind boggling that it works and it beats the market as well. So over 2018, Ethereum lost about 82% in value, unfortunately, but this strategy makes a 72% return, beating the market by 154.8%, the market being Ethereum in this case. So simply buying when the market has gone up over the last seven days, right? So the net change over the last seven days is positive, you buy and then sell when the opposite happens, when the market has gone down for the last seven days. Simply doing that, which is just two if statements, is enough to create a strategy that's able to go through this whole bubble and burst and still profit and nearly double your money. That's powerful. We hope you guys use this tool to explore all sorts of creative ideas and give us feedback. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next video.